Hey YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a 2018-2019 homeschool haul for my second grader. I'm gonna show you everything we're using for her this year. Um, some of the things we already started because we're homeschooling year round, she, um, in some subjects, went from what we did last year right into the next level or books of the new school year. She does like to keep busy and so um, I try to just give her some things that aren't too teacher intensive to do that she can do on her own um, while we're making that transition into the next school year. So for Bible, she is doing devotions for girls for ages eight through nine, God and Me. This is by um, Diane Corey. And it's a cute little devotional. Um, I got it spiral bound. When I purchased it, it looked like it came spiral bound and for some reason it didn't. So I just took it to the staples and got it done. Here's the table of contents. And then a little introduction. And then um, it goes on to start the lessons. She's already quite a bit into this, so I'm just going to show you the next, um, not lesson, but the next uh, activity pages that she would be doing. So here um, we have God the Creator. So every one of these activities starts with um, some scripture from the Bible, and then it has a brief story. And then sometimes there's more scripture at the bottom after the child reads the story. And then there's some questions that they can answer in here, and then a prayer, and then a fun little activity on the other page. And it just goes on and on like this throughout the book. So scripture, a story, um, some questions, a prayer, and then a cute little activity. So this is for children ages six through nine, and um, my daughter is still six, and she'll be seven soon, but um, some of the things, some of the topics are a little bit mature for her. Um, not by much, but she does come to me and say, you know, hey mom, what does this mean? Or um, should I be reading this? Because she's always, she's uh, my very cautious child about everything. Um, and so, I just look it over for her um, before she um, has the, it to do the next day. And if I think it's something that, you know, she will get confused about or she won't quite grasp the concept or the message, um, I'll do it with her. But other than that, she does it by herself. The other thing where it says your turn and there's three questions, sometimes she finds like the questions or are, are too um, schoolish. So she doesn't want Bible to be school, which I don't blame her, especially for this devotional. Um, and so I just have her pick a question if she wants to, and if she doesn't, she can do the prayer and then the fun activity, because that's what she really likes. But this really gets the kids thinking and putting God first, first thing in the morning. She sometimes likes to do this in the evening, and you know, she can do it whenever she wants, because as a family, we do have Bible time that we read um, the Bible at night, and um, on the weekends and things, and um, we're also doing a curriculum this year for Bible that I showed in my other video for my um, first grader, but my second grader will also be doing it. So this is just to give you a little idea if you're interested in a devotional. And there's no time limit on this. Um, she doesn't have to do it every single day, but I do try to encourage her to take that quiet time and just think about God um, and have a little time. These stories are kind of nice to get perspectives of um, children her own age and the sort of things that um, people her age think about and questions that might come up. And um, I like that it has a biblical answer, answer for that. Okay, so that's Bible. Okay, moving on from Bible, um, we are doing the Explode the Code um, books again. Um, we left off, I think she finished, yep, she finished one and two, and then in my last video I said that this was a little bit too hard at the time, and so she didn't want to do that. But we've picked this up again, so she's going to do Beyond the Code for Reading Comprehension during these um, few weeks when we have off and we're kind of transitioning into second grade. Um, she's going to do some of these pages, 
And again, I don't know how many pages she's going to do. It's going to kind of be up to her. She can set her own schedule for this. And then we're going to do um, Explode the Code books three and four. And it's kind of the same thing. She loves these books and she likes that they're independent for her. And as this transition happens between first and second grade, she wants to do these books. And I'm, I'm thrilled that she wants to because it's great practice. Okay, so same sort of thing goes for spelling. Um, in my last video, um, she finished up Spelling Workout A, and we really love this program. Even though our language arts program that we do um, is spelling, it's an all-in-one, it incorporates everything, we like to do our own little spelling um, in addition to that. So Spelling Workout is just a natural fit for her, and so we're doing that. Um, she'll be done with B before we start second grade. So I have another spelling that we're gonna try this year. But it's kind of the same thing, um, just some more longer paragraphs and the lists are half in cursive, I think towards the end here. Um, so for example there, um, so the lists, lists are half cursive and um, half print and so that's a little gonna be a little more challenging for her. So she'll be doing that and she'll be done before she completely starts second grade. But this is technically um, a second grade uh, spelling for her. So what we decided we were gonna try for um, spelling for when she officially starts second grade is the spelling you see. Um, we decided to go with B because the uh, riddles and things look really fun to her. So she wants to try something different and um, B looked like a good fit. Technically she could be in C, but I thought let's give this a try. Um, it comes with these really cute erasable colored pencils. And so in this they're gonna be finding um, consonant um, chunks and vowel chunks, and they're gonna identify that in the stories that they read, and they're also gonna do copy work. Um, so here, there's also a list of dictation words that I noticed in here um, that says that they're daily practicing. So I don't know how that's gonna be incorporated. I've never done this program, but I'm interested in trying it and see how she likes it. So it has here a daily um, dictation list for the teacher to dictate and for the student to write. So we'll see how that works out. So that's the teacher's manual, and it looks like the answers are here in the back of the teacher's manual. All the highlighted chunks. So there's two parts. So this looks like a really big spelling program, lots of writing. Um, but it looks fun. I like that this is, um, here, let's see if I can show you that. Um, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. So every kid pretty much knows their nursery rhymes and so this is kind of a fun way to introduce spelling and make it fun. She loves rhyming, um, so I think she's gonna love this. There's a lot of different um, YouTube videos on this, so I won't bore you by going through it too thoroughly. And again, this is new to me too, so I don't have too much information to give you about it. So, so it looks like there's 18, 18 lessons in this, part one, and it goes A, B, C, D, E. For each lesson and then book two goes all the way to 36 e so there's a lot more than just the 36 weeks of um, spelling here if you do a b c d and e um, so this is going to go well over her second grade year and if she likes it and enjoys it then it's something she can do um, into her third grade year i like that it has a lot of handwriting I just feel like handwriting is one of those things where, um, at least for my children, when they stop doing it for any length of time, especially during a, a school break, um, it almost seems like they forget how to form their letters properly when they start again. So I like to just keep the 
handwriting going throughout. So that's what we're going to do for spelling. There goes my pencils. Okay, so for handwriting, we're going to use um, handwriting without tears. We're going to do the printing power. Um, it also came with, let's see here if I can reach it. There we go. Um, this writing journal this year, they have like some new um, packages available. They change things up for handwriting without tears or learning without tears. So this looks just like a, um, a plain journal. Not sure what they're going to be doing with this, but it looks like um, draw and illustrate. So there's that. The building writers I was excited about. So it looks like they're going to teach um, the child how to write different types of um, like paragraphs, um, how to, let's see, become a writer, describe things, subject, tell what things are. My daughter's really interested in telling stories, but she has a hard time putting together um, a beginning, a middle, and an end to her stories. And so this is going to be great. I was actually thinking of getting her um, essentials in writing. But when I saw that the handwriting program we're using this year has this, I thought I would just stick with this for now and see how it works out and how it incorporates everything I wanted to get from Essentials in Writing and see if this kind of does the trick for her. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is the second grade one. Title, topic opinion writing. Oh, so they really go in depth here with the writing. And it doesn't look intimidating, which is good. And I didn't get the teacher's guide this year. Um, I didn't think I needed it, but I don't know. I might have to get it. So this is just the... Um, the workbook that um, Handwriting Without Tears is known for. Just their regular workbook that's fun, helps the kids form their letters properly. And my second grader is really good with her handwriting. She has really neat penmanship. But again, sometimes when we take um, a little bit of time off from handwriting, um, when she comes back, she's kind of like gained this whole new understanding of how she should form her letters and sometimes it's just completely wacky so um yeah I want to keep doing this throughout for her okay so that is that I forgot to mention in my first graders video, um, but it's true also for my second grader, we're doing um, keyboarding without tears from um, Learning Without Tears company. It's a one year um, student license and they get to do their um, typing on the computer. So that's gonna be um, an activity too that they do um, 20 minutes. I don't know if I'm gonna do it like two times a week or um, more than that, I'm not sure, but they're already signed up and they've been using it. And uh, they seem to like it. Right now it's fun, um, and I'm sure when it becomes like work to them, they're gonna not wanna do it. Um, but so far I'm keeping it fun, and they're doing it, and, and they seem to be progressing pretty well through it. I like it, the keyboarding program, because it does keep track of everything, the keystrokes and how well they're doing, how many tries they take, and I get a little report, so that's kind of fun. And it was only $10 for the one-year license, so it was totally worth it. And for my um, pre-K four-year-old, I got the, um, I think it's wet, dry, try, I think that's what they call it, from Learning Without Tears. But basically on his iPad, he gets to um, write all the letters and it also keeps track of how he's doing there. I know it's not related to this, but while I was talking about Learning Without Tears, I wanted to mention that in case when I do his video, I forget. So everyone's kind of doing their whole writing thing there.